This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. And the final part of this is if the takeover has cash received within it. And again, if you've looked at the chapter on capital gains tax for individuals, you will see that if there is a cash element to any takeover, then you will have to pay tax on that. And we're going to use example five uh, and follow on from example four and just change the cash, um, the preference shares into cash. So let's have a look at the model answer so that we can see how that works. So you'll see here in the model answer that as, as Z Limited received some cash at the time of the takeover, there's a gain that will arise that we need to do with. So don't forget, we start with what did I have? What did I receive and what is the value so that I can then apportion the cost accordingly? So this is what was received. This is then the value of that, which gives us a total. And again, we then apportion this cost accordingly between both the cash and the shares. It's the same as it is for individuals, almost exactly the same. So if you have done that chapter, this is a really good revision chapter. So the proceeds is the cash received. There's the cost. And there is the indexation allowance for that. So let's go back to the uh, notes and just finish off this chapter. So exam technique, shared disposals for individuals and companies will always form a part of a larger question um, in B or C. And make sure in the individuals that you um, deal with AEA, don't include indexation allowance. The computations always look the same. Um, for individuals, there might be an element of IHT that you will get in there, or you will get other gains and losses. For companies, it might form with other gains or losses, but it might form part of a larger CT question where you've got to work out TTP or the tax due.